Do something remarkable for Jesus while you can. Isaac called for his older, favoured son. This is a family divided. The sin of the father, mother and both sons on full display. This chapter will detail the third recorded Battle of the Brothers. So Isaac carnally conspires to counter the earlier prophecy of God through Rebekah. He wants his favourite elevated over Rebekah's favourite. She was formidable, very dishonest, but irrepressible. She isn't going to walk by faith. She's walking by willpower. She isn't going to sit by idly and let her husband supersede the prophecy God gave to her. Jacob is worried about discovery, not his deceit. He's already ruthlessly stolen Esau's birthright. With his mother on his side, why not now take the opportunity to also steal Esau's paternal blessing? Every trick Jacob uses to achieve his short-term carnal gains will ironically and painfully return to him in cursed form. Jacob could have received all the blessings and promises of God and not confronted the curses if only he lived in faith and obedience. Because of his deceit in this chapter, Jacob will be haunted by deception throughout his long life. There's not the slightest hint of any reservation in this deception. It's flagrant, it's willful, it's wicked. It'll be judged by God. At this point in his life, Jacob's not at the place where he can declare Yahweh as his God. When the word speaks clearly, don't bother engaging your senses, they'll quickly betray you. But with this trembling, he recognises his sinfulness. From Isaac's carnality comes a moment of supreme faith and clarity. Jacob, the usurper, the heel grabber, has fooled me thoroughly, with the help of his mother, no doubt. The blessing I intended for Esau, God has seen fit to give to Jacob. Esau wanted the blessings of God, but he wasn't willing to walk by faith. Jacob receives the blessings of the father and the acceptance of the father when he sheltered behind the name of the firstborn, beloved son of the Father. Never pursue the blessing and promises of God in carnal ways. Rebecca and Jacob were probably proud of their brilliant plotting and scheming, but God would have brought about his purposes in a wonderful and blessed way. God didn't need Rebecca and Jacob's help.